Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and someone who shouldn't have disposable income. This is not a test. This is a random review. Before we begin, thank you very much to Joseph T for coming back to the Patreon campaign. Thank you so much for the support. Always, always enjoy seeing your name pop up. Uh, Joseph, if I haven't done a request for you, you keep popping in at the top tier. So if you got a request, let me know. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get as caught up on those as absolutely possible. I still have a few to go. And then once we get through Metrocon uh, in the middle of July... I'm going to reopen it to all my top patrons, so everyone at my top tier will be able to make another request. So keep an eye out if you are at that level on my Patreon. So, let's cover today. Today is what we call, I was planning a much bigger video today, and then I got way too busy. Uh, so, <laughs> we are going with Plan B. And Plan B is to discuss two of my favorite Dinobots, my old favorite Swoop, and my new favorite Scar. Uh, if I haven't thrown in a cheap plug here uh, often enough on this channel. I will inform you if you're still after these two because the sightings are pretty sporadic. Uh, my friends over at Entertainment Earth are getting theirs in this month. If you would like to pre-order them there, they are still both available individually. Uh, I will leave a link in the description below so you can go find them for yourself. If you use my link, it does help support the channel and uh, make sure you get your toys at the same time. So we both win. Oh, and if you want to use my Entertainment Earth link to save 10% on in-stock orders, you can do that too. So, a lot of stuff going on. All right, so cheap plugs out of the way. Let's actually talk about these two. Since we're doing two at once, we're going to try and cover them very quickly. And we're going to start in the robot mode because we've got a lot to cover on here. And I think this is the quicker route to do it. So, Swoop is kind of amazing. Remember... These are supposed to turn into, like, limbs as well. So it's kind of like a given that at their size and with their uh, their combiner compatibility that these guys are going to suffer in one way or another. Swoop looks fine. Swoop looks absolutely fine. You know, aside from maybe, like, a little underpainted because, like, a lot of that has to go into the Pteranodon head, his own head that's usually a unique color, the blue on the chest. Uh, so besides that, besides maybe missing a little bit of paint, like, he looks fine. His proportions are good, you know? Uh, it looks like Swoop. He's pretty clean all the way around. Uh, yeah, it's really surprising. It's actually very surprising. Um, I mentioned, like, lack of paint. I did forget that the entirety of the lower legs are actually molded in white and then painted gray to match. It's actually a really good paint match. You get a little bit of red down the side of the leg, too. That covers more in beast mode than it does here. I'm going to go ahead and remove his twin guns, which are full painted black, because this will eventually be the hand. In a nice, clever thing, uh, the, the hand splits into two literal handguns. And then we can combine them together, and that's going to be the combiner mode hand. We'll try and show off the combine mode, the limb modes as well. I'm just trying to get through everything very quickly here as a result, because there's a lot to cover. So, the head sculpt is pretty nice for the size. Uh, the mouth might be a little bit muted. That might just be for how heavy the silver paint is, but it does invoke swoop very, very well. I'm, I'm quite happy with the overall look and appearance of the toy. Uh, everything's said and done. So, articulation-wise, I'm going to hinge those wings back to give me a lot more range in the shoulders, which are full ball-jointed, so that gives you all the movement you need there. The head is also on a ball joint with a lot of upward motion, so if you want swoop looking up or flying straight ahead, that is a doable thing. Ball-jointed elbows means rotation at that point as well. Hips are also ball-jointed, full range there. Thigh swivel as well. Super deep knee bend thanks to the transformation. For a core class, it's some of the best articulation you're going to find. He has a lot of range and can do a lot with his posability. Now, if you want to, if, if you want to uh, fancy him up even more naturally, the wings do fold out. So, if you want a winged swoop, that is of course something you can do as well. Lots of cool stuff you can do with him. Extremely poseable and nicely detailed for the size. Comes back to bite a little bit in the beast mode because, well, you will see. This This is about the only way he really uh, 
he really suffers for his art. So I'm going to go ahead and fold the uh, the head up, fold the dino head over it. That's going to form uh, the traditional looking head. Uh, everything else is pretty bog standard. Uh, I'm going to connect these tabs at the sides of his forearms into his thighs and then connect the connect the feet on their peg, fold this over, connect down to the back, and that's pretty much the only thing you have to his transformation. Swoop has never been complex. As a toy, you have no one has ever accused Swoop of being the complicated Dinobot. It's pretty bog standard. It's pretty simple. So not a whole lot going on here. I mean, he looks fine. Aside from the giant blocks on the back that are in no way aerodynamic. But hey, um, the poor boy is trying. <laughs> so, so let's give him let's give him credit. Even the G1 kind of did this. Uh, it could hide it a little bit better, but you know, it's just just kind of just how the toy goes. Can't do a whole lot with a pteranodon shape. Head looks nice though. Fully painted, Autobot symbol on there, bright blue eyes. You know, that looks like swoop to me. Uh, I do wish the head was like, I, I do wish like the head worked a little bit more in, tan in tandem. So you could have like a little bit more posability in the head. It really only looks right when it's straight ahead. You can still flap the wings and arc them. So it has kind of a glide going on. But for the most part, that's your lot on swoop. You can, however, I should point this out too, because that's only fair. Let me disengage the hand again. You can take these two pegs on the underside and line them up with the gaps in the inside of the guns or fists, whichever you want to, whichever one you want to think of them as, to give you some underwing guns that look pretty nice. You know, it's a nice, it's a nice spot for them. You know, they don't fit quite flush, but hey, it gives the Pteranodon mode a little bit of firepower. So if you want to give a little bit more play value, there you go. So yeah, Swoop's really nice. Very simple transformation in beast mode. That's to be expected if you know Swoop. All right, I think it makes up for it for having this really lovely robot mode that really does not sacrifice at all for everything else it has to do. So that is Swoop. Now let us move on to new favorite Dinobot. So for starters, I already love like big heavy aesthetic i love a big bruiser of a robot and then you tie on the fact that it's my favorite dinosaur finally having a traditionally styled dinobot and you have scar my new favorite and the one i hope gets so much of the love he looks great and i love how he definitely like he definitely has his own silhouette that's unique amongst the dinobots especially if you look at their g1 incarnations none of them are this heavy in the shoulders none are none are even that heavy in the legs really he's a big wide tank of a robot which is appropriate for an ankylosaurus so once again we're going to take a look at the head uh scar uh the inspiration originates from idw where uh yeah, I believe he's the one who coined the ability to actually form a beast mode. Um, uh, to like, I believe it was, it, if I recall the story right, he's the one who came up with the idea of scanning uh, alt modes on the spot in, in order to quickly adapt to a situation. So that was his thing. And he looks good. He looks good. I, I think the head sculpt and the overall body shape definitely makes him stand out amongst the Dinobots, which is the goal they had with this figure when they were conceiving it. Something that... Looked like it fit in with the traditional team, but also stood out amongst itself. The same way that like Swoop or Snarl have unique silhouettes, Scar does too. And it works really, really well. Uh, we'll go ahead and remove his gun, which is really just a, a giant fist. Though he's supposed to be the team medic, so I imagine this is like an Energon injector. Just kind of like boost up uh, whoever's down on the field in a moment's notice. As we can see, like uh, like Swoop, very clean all around. Just a little bit of kibble on him. I like how he wears the Beast Mode legs. They tuck up nicely here on the back side, as well as across the front of the uh, actual ro uh, legs for the robot mode. And yeah, they seem to blend in pretty well. Uh, yeah, he looks, he looks good all the way around. Really, really like them. Really, really like him. So... Articulation wise, the head does rotate, not a ball joint this time, just normal rotation. Shoulders are on a ball joint, no elbow this time, but thanks to transformation, you could get like a butterfly effect, which I kind of like because it can let him like bring over that uh, ankylo armor 
and make some kind of like makeshift shield to take on incoming blasts. Again, everything about him screams tank. You know, and if you're talking about a Dinobot medic that has to get in and off the battlefield with his, you know, and tank as much damage as possible in order to get, uh, in order to treat, you know, soldiers or warriors, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'd want him to just be a walking shield. That actually works. That makes, that, you know, there's logic there. You have a waist rotation, which is something kind of rare in the core, in the core series these days, uh, especially in these combiners. You have the thigh, uh, and the ball joint. Great range of motion there. Ball joint in the knee as well. Gives you a super deep knee bend as well as a rotation there. So, he doesn't have quite as much going on as Swoop in the articulation range. But I think he's got enough to get by. Um, yeah, really helps that he's got this big heavy set build too. So, he's fairly stable. He's fairly stable uh, in anything I can really do with him. Alright. So, again, we're going to go into the transformation into the beast mode. This is, again, pretty simple. So I'm going to connect the legs and rotate that all the way around. Make sure the head is straight before I fold up the arms. Connect them together with the pegs and tabs that are lined up there. With that lined up, fold the legs over like so in order to form the shell. I'm going to flip up the head. Make sure everything up here is pressed together or the head will not fit in the slots it's supposed to. And then that... Swing down the legs, Nice. make sure uh, that little piece is folded up, move those legs down, and then come and grab the tail, plug on, and that is your first traditionally designed Ankylosaurus as a Dinobot. I say traditionally designed because there's only two before, uh, a, re a repaint of Beast Wars Neo Bazooka and a, uh, a uh, Power Core Combiner Drone. And that really doesn't scratch the itch. This one comes much closer to scratching the itch. The head is given a more unique shape. You can almost see almost a beak shape to it. Uh, it doesn't have some of the traditional elements I would expect of an ankylosaurus, like the spikes coming off the sides of the head. But the goal here is, again, to be a little bit unique and stand out a little bit. For me, the concern was that it would look a little bit too much like Snarl. It does kind of have a similar head profile to that. But how close it really is, that's to be determined once uh, we have Snarl in hand. I mean, obviously people have seen him now, but, you know, you get the point. The toy does have a nice bit of paint. Lots of gold across the back, as well as a bunch of silver, especially on the front side of the shell. I really wish it went the entire length, but then, of course, like the gray wouldn't look right in the robot mode. So I could kind of see why they limited it. Um, he's got the spines down the sides as well, uh, and again, I kind of wish it had more of that wide shell silhouette that you'd normally associate with an Ankylosaurus, but to get something that still fits the G1 aesthetic, I think this is a pretty good approximation. I think this is a pretty good job to do it, and I do think it is clever to use the combiner fist as the actual club tail. That's a neat way of, like, getting a double purpose out of that piece. Uh, toy wise, you're going to get, you know, your standard like back and forth legs. And that's a pretty much it as far as like playability in this mode. Uh, yeah, if you know what an Ankylosaurus is, it's pretty much what you get. It's just a big tank of a dinosaur. And I love it for that. So yeah, both of these guys, both of these toys don't really have anything wrong with them. If you go into them anticipating the usual like limitations of core class toys, then yeah, like in some ways they excel a lot compared to others. So I'm quite happy with them. Has me itching for a leader class scar that will never come, but one can always hope. So let's see how close, let's see how like, like how quickly I can show you the arm modes. So let me get, these legs flipped up like so. We're going to flip the robot legs out again. And uh, let's see. Rotate this around so all the spines face the same direction. Make sure all that's closed up. This piece comes down. That's the 5 millimeter port that's going to get used to actually uh, connect the arm onto the body. Uh, I don't have the rest of... Uh, I don't have the rest of Volcanicus here, so I apologize if I can't like demonstrate how close it is. We'll do a whole video once all six are out. To kind of show what everyone looks like together. Now a tab at the top of the wrist is going to fit into that spot right there. 
Uh, on mine, it doesn't really hold in as well as I would like, but it will stay. So that's your arm. That's your arm mode for Scar. It's a pretty beefy arm. Um, I do, you know, it's going to, you can use the waist and the hips as uh, a makeshift elbow joint, but it is going to force them to have bicep curler hands, which is not really good when that side of the hand is hollow. So there's a defect. There, there's a flaw in Scar. Much as I hate to admit that there is one, there is that one. Swoop, on the other hand, is, uh, is interesting. So I'm going to take his, I'm going to take his hands now. He's, I'm going to uh, fold out his wings. Uh, let's see if I can remember how to do this, because I haven't put him in arm mode in a hot minute. Go ahead and connect the guns like so. Okay, I needed to make sure I'm doing this the official way. The official way is wings out like so, forearms rotated backwards and then bent up like so. You have tabs here on the underside that connected him in the uh, the triceradon, the you know the uh, sorry the pteranodon mode. Go ahead and make sure that's connected. That's the only thing keeping the arms in position right there. And then this, uh, the hands have two slots on the top, two tabs there on the back side of the feet. So you can go ahead and connect them like so. I'm going to rotate that around. Uh, yeah, and then yeah, fold out that little connector. And that is going to be swoop in his arm mode. So a little bit of a challenge here. Uh, right arm much thinner than left arm. So Volcanicus is definitely a lefty. Uh, and it's a, it's, it's always weird trying to make, this is why Dinobots shouldn't combine. Just like keeping them in proportion in all the modes gets so funky sometimes. It's close. It gets the job done, you know. Now, articulation wise, yeah, he's going to have that same point, that hinge there, the waist and thigh still work. You have the hollow inner th piece there, thanks to the legs, but at the very least, the fist does look smoother on this one, so you can bicep curl him at least, and looks okay. So yeah, once we get all six out, we'll do a whole video about how the team looks together in all the modes, because that's going to be very important with these guys. But for now, that is Swoop and Scar in everything that they do. And I think for core class, especially for the core class Dinobots, they are two of the most impressive ones. They have tons of articulation, really nice robot modes, and they don't really feel like they sacrifice nearly as much as some of the others in this team like Grimlock and Sludge do. They stand on their own very, very well as just really nice independent Dinobot toys that are very conveniently sized for your desk. So even if you aren't intent on getting all of Volcanicus, I definitely think these are two of the strongest ones you can get. If you just want a little bit of Dinobot in your life, go for these. These are probably my two favorites, which, you know, I think is pretty appropriate. I'm like, I think you guys got this. I will back away and I will see you all later. You've got this handled. <laughs> Alafi's like, really? You're not gonna help me? Like, it's fine now. It's like these disgusting <laughs> creatures breathing down my neck and you're all just like, I believe in you. You got this. That all right, you seem to have this. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs>